This is a brief tutorial on how to set up a tax server from Tax Product Center. Now the assumption here is that you've seen a world of documentation and it's complicated and you don't know where to start and you don't have a lot of time. So here goes. You need a box, Linux box with git and you need to run git clone. And the URL you need is github.com cloudrf tax server. And this is a small repo which contains some scripts which grease the wheels on the TAC server setup. Now this doesn't actually contain the TAC server. You have to get that from TAC product center, TAC.gov. It's the only place you should be downloading this software because it is export controlled. So you've got your software, you've downloaded it, and we're now going to copy uh, the TAC server Docker server which we copied. And it will look like that. It will say tax server docker 4.7 release 20. It'll be quite a big file and we've copied that into the folder that we're working in. We're now ready to set up. So we run this command script setup.sh. Run that command and he checks ports. He might ask you for a password if you're doing it for the first time but that's only to check what process is holding a port open. Okay, he's checking checksums, they've passed, they're okay. He warned us briefly that he was going to start with this release, just in case we've got several. He unzipped it all, it's about 900 megabytes uncompressed, and now we're into the SSL generation, so this saves a lot of time. So I'm just going to fly through this and just hit enter three times. You could put in your own values into there. Don't worry about that Python error, that's just relating to this box here, and URL lib. Okay, this is now Docker, only this is our CloudRF Docker because we're using the new Postgres. So we're setting up a new version of Debian, new version of Postgres. There's two Docker containers for this TAC server. One is the actual server, which is a big piece of Java, and the other is a Postgres database at the back end. Okay, certificate generation is saying, please give a name for your CA certificate authority. This could be a website.com or it could just be random. So we just hit enter and he makes a random one. There you go, it's that random number. Okay, creates a certificate authority and now he's setting up all the keys. You've got an admin account with a key, you've got a user one, you've got a user two, and you've also got data packages. And these zip files are what you need to quickly set up a end user device like ATAC or ITAC. We've set up the admin account here in the Postgres database and we're just finishing up loading and here we are. When you see this text you're done. So he's saying you need to import the admin.p12 certificate into your web browser because it uses mutual TLS authentication to get to this URL. If you don't follow this step you will not be able to access the interface. It's really important. Make a note of these passwords. They won't be shown again. They also exist in a file called coreconfig.xml, uh, which you can find in your TAC folder. Now, we talked about those zip files earlier. If you want those, uh, they are located in TAC certs files. Okay, user one.zip, user two.zip. Copy those across to your tablets, phones, whatever, WinTAC install them, so import from local storage, and that will set up your server and your user certificates and keys on the device. 